welcome to the One Pan Podcast. I'm John. I remain Bryce. And tonight, we'll be making... Octoberfest! Hi, friends. Hey. Welcome I'm, to another episode. It's going to be I'm, great. It's, I'm so excited about this. Yeah. This food has booze in it. It actually... And it, it seems like a moderately good recipe. It, okay, so when it comes to like booze and food, I've found either... You put it in when you make it. You put it in super early so that it just disappears into the rest of the food. Yeah, sure, sure. The alcohol, you know, whatever cooks out. Right, and and also like any of the whatevery flavoriness. Oh, of sure, it. the nutty, the, whatever, the sommelier nonsense right. that people try to say into the. It is an oaky woody. Nope. Like yeah, you put wine in something while you're making it, it just tastes like vinegar afterwards and that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> and so I, I'm I'm so skeptical about booze and food, mm-hmm. or it's stuff where you've already made the food and then you drenched it in booze afterwards, which is just the same as eating, you know, a, a cake and then drinking rum, rum cake. Sure, sure. Which is like a it's like I, I, you got you're you're drinking at dinner and you spill the alcohol on your food. Yeah, yeah. And so it's sort of like, is there a way to put booze in food and make food? Tastes like booze, but also tastes good. But also tastes good, yeah. So what are we doing right now? We're browning, grounding the brown peel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are good. browning the kielbasa, the right? Beef smoked sausage. Beef smoked sausage. Funny story about beef smoked sausage. Uh, I like how you're just putting odd spaces in between those words. Beef smoked sausage. I just want it. I just it's like uh, when you uh, when you you call the bank, right, and they ask you to uh, to do your. Uh, what am I trying to say? They ask you to try to do your like your PIN number or something like that, right? Please talk to your account number. And so you're like, zero, one, <laughs> eight, five, three, seven. I like try to yeah. sound like the robot so yeah. the robot understands gotta, me. You got to put spaces in. <laughs> Robots may not know about spaces. They don't. They don't quite get the inflection of what we're talking about. No. Uh, so my sister, her mm-hmm. third kid, mm-hmm. little girl, I don't know what it is. We shall call uh, Abby. Uh, sure. That's not her name. So that works. <laughs> um, and so Abby. As all little kids, I don't get why little kids do this. This is why I think humans are evolutionary, uh, terrible uh, anomalies. Mm-hmm. Because little kids just like won't eat food. That's a weird phase that they yeah. go through. <laughs> you get to bump into that in a couple of years, but they're just like, no, no. I don't want to eat. Uh, I don't want to be healthy and happy and growing. No, I'm okay. very hungry right now, but I won't do the thing that will make me not ha- will right. make me happy. Kids are dumb. Yeah, um, they're fun like that. And so, for Christmas one year, someone sent one of those, like, three-foot summer sausages. Oh, which, yeah. Which, what, who does what? Who could, they, what do you do with that? Who, How do you eat that in one session? Where's you someone, can't. Why so, did someone think that was a good idea? Uh, right. So, someone sent that to my sister. My sister was like, oh, whatever. So, she started cutting it up, and her little girl got, she was like two, three or something. Nice. And she was interested in it. And so, she was like, you want to eat this? <laughs> this, this is the, weird. This is the thing she you want to eat? She finished, like... One of them in like two or three days, and so for six, seven months after that, we just called her Yardo Beef. <laughs> yardo Beef, that's funny. Have you ever drank a yard of Beef? Yes, I have. Yes. I think kids like that are interesting because my favorite thing is, is that kids do when they don't eat food is, is they'll get attached to one thing. Right? They will only eat chicken nuggets. They will that's only exactly eat- me. I was that kid. I would show up at my grandparents' place and they'd make a fabulous meal for everyone and I'd be like, Jim can nuggets. <laughs> and I just think it's the most... Okay, Fuck what, me as a kid. What just gets me is that to then eat other things, you have to lie to the child that it's that thing. You have to be like, oh no, this is chocolate cookies when it's when it's when it's when it's in reality it's broccoli with cheese or whatever or or worse you get the kid that doesn't necessarily love just one food they love an additive to foods like uh um, like loving ketchup? My, yes. Like okay. so. Th- so then, what do you have to do? You have to put ketchup on everything. You have to put ketchup on everything. I have a that's my nephew. Food crimes happen. My nephew loves Parmesan cheese. So he that's it. It's just Parmesan cheese on everything is the only way he will eat things. And you just feel bad because you're like Parmesan cheese doesn't go on that ice cream there, it, buddy. It goes on many things. It doesn't go on, but a not lot on of everything. No, nope. and it's everything. He'll put Parmesan cheese on his hamburgers. He'll put Parmesan cheese on his uh, just. Whatever the heck they Does make. Does he take a bath in Parmesan a cheese? A little bit, maybe. He's oh. a little... He's a little... Like a weird kid. Stink funk. <laughs> 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 he gets. He gains a little... Uh, that cheese funk smell. You know, a fun thing... Okay, so I got my degree in psychology. 
Um, a fun thing that you can do to people. Oh, so you're better than me? Yep. Um, I know more about your brain than you do. <laughs> no. Well, maybe a little, but whatever. <laughs> Nothing useful about your brain. That's what it is. I know lots of things that are pointless. <laughs> sure. But but let's talk about your mother. But if you wanna if you wanna screw around with people, there's a chemical in vomit, and a chemical in parmesan. It's buriatric acid. Wow. And it's part of what the smell is. And so what you can do to people is is you can say, okay, I've got two things for you. A little bit of barf. I don't know how you obtain it. That's one of those things when you like. You have it. to barf in a cup. I guess. Like, like that's one <laughs> to of those make things. Make the study happen. You're like, I yeah. gotta, I gotta yeah. sacrifice a little bit to so, get this. Some questions you don't want to ask. But I'm sure it was like a synthetic whatever sure. they do, sure. right? Sure, some sure, bullshit sure. like that. But you can hold a little warm cup of Parmesan cheese and a mm-hmm. little warm cup of vomit, and you can have someone sniff it, and you'll ask them. You can have them sniff the vomit, and they'll be like, "What's that smell like?" They'll be like, "Parmesan cheese," <laughs> and then they'll be like, "It's puke." <laughs> It's Ralph. It's it's someone else's too. It's someone else's. Not even Ralph. yours. Not even you mine. Sniffed it. <laughs> you sniffed and it. And your brain was like, I kinda like that. You're like, I'm into it. I think that might be good on my pasta. Yep. But it's delicious. Ah, oh, goodness gracious. Okay, so we're browning the sausage. And I think it's done being browned. All right, so step. we threw in the onions to brown those as well. You get an onion powder because I'm a little bitch. And <laughs> oh, I don't that's like a, onions. Sure, sure. I was trying to like fool our audiences, no, but no. That actually looks pretty good. Okay. Cool. So then we throw in the, uh, once the sausage is brown, add in the sliced onions, do the thing. Once the onions are caramelized, add in the cabbage. Oh. Add in the cabbage. And just sweat it. Stir to combine and allow the cabbage to soften and take on the flavor of the sausage and onion. Onion for a few minutes, which is great. Which gives us the perfect time while this uh, sweats and does its thing to do the dishes. Dishes. Let's do the dishes from last episode. Okay. So what do we got? Last episode. Oh, let's talk about the Japanese game show. Okay. Uh, so uh, the name of uh, it's called Sakuri Sweets, which is uh, I'm I'm sure I'm butchering that way of saying Sakuri, um, but it means looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Japanese for the Look. for looks like. So the game show is basically uh, Sakuri Sweets or looks like sweets, looks like chocolate. I like a good straightforward name. I yeah. like it's. Don't don't yank me around. No no no, that's okay. fine. Not deal or no deal. It's money in a money in a case. It should be just called money in a briefcase. R- really? Okay. So this is how I know. Howie Mandel yells at you for an hour. This is how I know I would be terrible on game shows because if I showed up on Deal or No Deal and I picked two or three, how do how does it, you pick like three cases? I don't cases? have any idea. Whatever the hell. Okay. I point pick, at hot ladies and you're like, yeah. It'd be like uh, that one, that one, that one, and then the. You know, the banker guy would yeah, be yeah. like, uh, I'll make you an offer of uh, 22 grand. I'd be like, take it, get in the car. Yeah, really. Wouldn't you Wouldn't you want to? I don't feel like they have poor Americans they, they play sh- that game. They showed up with no money. Mm-hmm. They were just offered 22 grand. There's a fantastic chance they will make less than that. You look at the stats of the show. Mm-hmm. There's some people who make more. Mm-hmm. There's a fantastic chance you're walking out of that. If you keep going, you walk out with like two grand. Yep. Take the twenty two. Take the twenty. Pay off a, l- a couple of bills. Yeah, dude. Get financially ahead in uh-huh. your life. That's that's student loans, baby. Yeah, yeah. They don't. Yeah, they don't I, hire millennials for those game shows because they know the millennials would be like, oh my gosh, eighteen thousand dollars. That's the remainder of my like, student loans. I could be, uh, I could be debt free. You know, like that's that's what I would do. I'm not gonna buy a vacation to the Bahamas or things like that. I'm gonna pay off a damn Capital One card. Gosh, thirty two percent APR. Thanks, Capital One. Uh, okay, so then the uh, the name of Jeff Goldblum's album, I have no idea what it was called, so we looked it up. It's the Capitol Studio Sessions uh, featuring the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra. Because, of course, that's what it's called. Yeah, clearly. It, Some, it, sometimes it, I think Jeff Goldblum is just playing a joke on us. He's <laughs> like, all right, I'm going to do this weird thing, and then we love it. Yeah. And then I think he's just decided I'm going to keep pushing it. And I, <laughs> And not in a and not in a bad way. No, it's not no. like he does like poo art or something. Right. Where he like gets crazy really and he has a studio us. in Los Angeles and he's like, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make stuff with my feces. <laughs> and people will still enjoy me. No, he just gets like a little he has like a healthy level of he's like if Mr. Rogers Got weird. Got weird. Yeah. Yeah, got weird in his old age and was just like, I'm gonna get a little kooky here. We're gonna have a lot of fun. You know, and he started making like real life like life size puppets, life size. Like, yeah. like he bought. He went to San Francisco and bought the trolley and made it the trolley to what's the place in, in Mr. Rogers' uh, neighborhood, 
uh, Forever Neverland dishes. and next episode. Um, so the feature. I they, like it when dishes make dishes. That's good. We just, but that's that's like okay. That's like when you do. I like it when our ignorance <laughs> produces content. <laughs> that's like how I can't. I have to use like thirty different knives to make a sandwich because my idiot, like my dumb idiotness, is like ah, I'm gonna use this one for peanut butter and then this one knife for just lick the knife. Be a caveman. No. <laughs> No, I just after making a sandwich, just seventeen knives in the dish in the in the in the sink because I don't know how to use them. But okay, who the fudge is Mildred Snitzer? Is my question, Jeff? Because it's not like it's a separate band that he hired and contracted. It's according to the it's the actor is joined by his band, the so Mildred he, Snitzer. So he made that. On so purpose. his brain cooked up the words Mildred Snitzer. Put that together in a sentence. Went to another higher-ranking adult and said, "This is what I want to call my band," and they said, "Yes." <laughs> like what? This is okay. This is fine. We we believe this is lucrative. Yeah, of course, Jeff. Whatever you want. <laughs> uh, the actor is joined by his band Mildred Snitzer, as well as Sarah Silverman, Haley Reinhardt, and more. Which I'm very excited to listen to this Christmas. Oh, is it, are they doing a Christmas shindig? I think it's well. I think it's supposed to be like a jazzy Christmas album, but I'm not super sure. Uh, one of my favorite Christmas albums is Santa Claus. Oh, um, and they do Visa W. It's, so, it's something like that. Santa. It's Claus. a homonym. <laughs> yeah, hum, homophone. It's a homophone. What's a homonym? It's Santa Claus, where they use Christmas. We're going to do the dishes on homophones and homonyms next right. week because I don't know what that is either. So they do Metallica songs mm-hmm. with Christmas instruments. <laughs> it's not. Good, but you're <laughs> but sort of like if you know the songs and you listen to them, suddenly you'll go like, "Oh, how are they going to produce that?" Oh, they use jingle bells for that part. Wow, wow. Is that they like use a... little bells for you know? <laughs> Enter Sandman. Yes, that's a, that's a fantastic one. <laughs> Is that like a Jimmy Fallon? That's like Jimmy Fallon, where he uses the the kids' Christmas instruments to play pop songs. Have you listened to those things? Uh, okay. Well. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Daycare day instruments. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daycare instruments where they use the tiny little, the the tinkling piano, the, the what's the thing called that you blow into it? A, a sousaphone? You I'm said not. blow into it and I haven't made a dick joke yet. <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry. It's nothing. coming. That's two jokes. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Blow into the dick. Anyways. No, it's the, the little marimba yeah, on yeah, a, yeah, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. can pull. It's got wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's colorful. They probably do the percussion with that lawnmower that goes that goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so then who invented pe- penicillin? We need to cover yes. this. Uh, so yes. I thought it was Jonas Salk, which who? is not a thing. He invented. Uh, he didn't. Invent, he did not <laughs> did not invent did polio. It. I almost said it. I didn't say it though. He invented polio. He gave us polio. Thank you, Jonas Salk. I'm and then kidding. he cured it. And then he cured it. What a what a mensch. He syndromed it. He's. <laughs> Yeah, damn it, you caught me monologuing. Hey, that's great. What a mensch. Which also... Cabbage has, stinks. Yeah. I've never made anything with cabbage before in my life. And because, now we'll never make cab- anything with cabbage uh, again. It says it will take on the flavor of the beef. And I'm kind of sure. like, does it take on the smell too? Cause, you know, hopefully, because it's taking... Because it, it smells like a baked asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Left in the sun for too long. You went to the nude. But, you went to the nude beach. Uh-huh. You uh, laid on your stomach. You fell asleep. You got a sunburned butthole. Uh-huh. And now your farts are weird. And now your farts are weird. Uh, no, Jonas Salk invented the, uh, the the vaccine to polio. Yes. He did not give us polio. Thank you, nature. Thank you. No, but Appreciate that's it. but but uh, Alexander Fleming invented the cure for pen, uh, invented penicillin, not the cure for penicillin. No, because I don't know what how could you cure penicillin. There's nothing to cure. No, it's, <laughs> it, it is the cure. It is a chemical that kills things that are alive. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. That's like the inventing the cure to Tylenol. Like, huh? right. <laughs> right, the anti Tylenol. And then, um, what did I say? So the website blog was uh, uh, nights in Temecula or something like that. Temecula, uh, a thou- hundred days in Temecula, a hundred nights in Temecula, a thousand nights in Temecula or something. Six that days was, and seven nights. Was six days seven. <laughs> My parents really like that movie. What is that? What is no, that? No, that's uh, Harrison Ford and oh, yeah. the crazy lady from uh, uh, Contact. Yes. Yeah, Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. Jodie or is Foster. it? No, it's not Jodie Foster, is it? It's someone who looks like her. It was definitely. You know how on Hollywood there's always like the person who's famous, kind of mm-hmm. like how uh, Robert Downey Jr. and the guy who sings and went to jail for crack. We just talked about him. 
Henry oh, Connick Jr. Yeah, Harry Connick Jr. You don't have to put that part. You Not Henry. <laughs> Harry Connick Jr. Henry okay. Connick Jr., his brother. His brother. <laughs> who, who, who went to jail for a crack? No, no. Or whatever it was. Anyway. No, that's totally, like, he was totally clearly a drug store Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they both went to jail. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Weird. Coincidence. Anyways, but, but Jodie Foster and the chick in Six Days and Seven Nights, or Seven Days and Six Nights, whatever. They uh-huh. got trapped on the island, then they Numbers banged. of times. Spoilers. Um, anyways. Why don't we bring that shit up? I don't know either. Oh, blog. Uh, the Hundred Days. Thousand Nights in Temecula. Yes. Got it. Anyway, so that uh, is, I, I mixed that up with a couple of different things, which was a handful. Let, let's unpack your brain damage. My brain damage. My brain munched these couple things together. So it was uh, a couple of things, which is to say it was A Million Ways to Die in the West, to that wonderful, um, wonderful. Seth, 2014 Seth MacFarlane film. That wonderful and unprofitable Seth MacFarlane film. Agreed. But it also was Once Upon a Time in Mexico, that Johnny Depp film. Where he got his eyes poked out. Spoilers. Oh, he does? Oh, in it's what not way? a good movie. I've it's, not seen it. Oh, it's just... it's. One of those dumb '90s action movies. That's the short version. Is of it that. like a? Is it like a? Is it dumb like a? What a Will Smith's? Yeah, like Bad Boys. Totally. Oh no, that was I was referring to his western. Oh oh no, <laughs> no <laughs> Wild Wild, Wild West. West. I was so when I was a kid, I wanted that to be so good. Uh, that was my first iteration with steampunk. Oh, okay, yeah, that yeah. That was my first like people were like steampunk. It's that, and I was like, that's actually pretty cool. That's a great concept. But I think we all wanted that movie to be great, and boy howdy, did it not come through. <laughs> it was very. How did Will Smith still have his West Philadelphian accent in 1891? It didn't translate. Very well. It just got. I don't know. I have a lot of issues with that movie because I I wanted it to be very cool. I remember trying to defend it. You got to see some of Hayek's butt. Yeah, that's the really only. Pretty much. Like you can't argue. Uh huh. You got to see your butt. Your Neat. butt. Neat. Fantastic. Thumbs up. Enjoyed that. <laughs> okay, so it says to cook the cabbage until it's golden. I guess I'll just keep on cooking the cabbage. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, I it's think still very green because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a plant. So I'm not sure how we're going to get golden. I mean, I guess I kind of see how the white is slightly slightly brown. This is quickly turning into Two Idiots Cooking. Hi, welcome to the Two Idiots Cooking, the podcast within a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Where we don't know jack shit. (laughs) And we don't care. Follow the recipe. And it still doesn't work out for us. Okay, I'm going to turn up the heat because it said that should do it in four to five minutes. We've been doing this for seven minutes and it doesn't look terribly golden. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem so At this point, are we just making sauerkraut and putting it into a stew? I, I hope love not. this idea. I, I love not. this. I mean, idea. I enjoy sauerkraut. I actually enjoy I like a good Reuben. Kraut on a dog. Kraut on a dog. Kraut on a dog. I kind of think we're good. We've got all the dishes, which is perfect. Um, uh, and so, do you want to do that? You want to put away the leftovers? We can put away the leftovers, which away. is our new segment of finishing thoughts from episodes past. Yes. Because I, you rightly pointed out, we do this thing where you will have a thought and you'll try to do this thought. And then I, you're on a one train, you're on a train, right? Barreling down towards the end of your thought. And I am a train robber. And my job is not to steal the gold from your thought. No, it's to derail the train of your thought and go, now we're over here. And I do that so often. Because it took us two and a half episodes to finish your Star Trek thought about time bubbles. And while that was utterly hilarious, <laughs> hey, I don't think anyone else can follow my like ridiculous nonsense of, this is how John's brain works. No one can still get working. done. Shit's still working. It's fine. <laughs> the leftovers of the episode. So, um, 980 something. What did we decide that they're called for, for that no, episode no, One Piece? For... So, because it's a manga, um, it all comes out in chapters. What I don't know is is how many chapters go into... Because a chapter will be just in one section of the larger magazine booklet. I think it's more of a booklet. They usually have like about 100 pages to them. I just love how you said, booklet. <laughs> bu- 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 booklet. It's such a... It's- that's such a wide lips thing to wide say. Wide lips is back. 
Okay, this shit isn't getting gold in. I'm just going to... No, I, no, no. Look at it. It's gold. Definitely. You see the white pieces in Heather kind of... Do you want of... to keep going? No, no. I think Because I don't want this cabbage to be shitty. No, no. It's good. It's like, good. we're throw the rest of the potatoes in and stuff like that. I think it's going to be well, fine. What is the next step? Let's, uh, <laughs> Let's not chuck those boys I'm in. I'm looking. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, once the cabbage is softened and golden, add that's in the true. black pepper, ground caraway seeds, and a pinch of salt and stir to combine, and then garlic. They do things... Recipes always do this, where they do just this little tiny bit of... And I'm like... I need more than that, man. My te- my tongue, my taste buds aren't that sensitive. Yeah. I can't do a pinch of this, a tiny bit of that. I, I question how how much one eighth of a something of a teaspoon of salt can change, you know, four pounds of something. It's in terms of quantity. I'm sort of like, if I didn't add this. Would I notice? Yeah. There are some spices that are super powerful, and I sure. get that. This is where that caraway seed, so we've got caraway seeds, which is a thing, and, uh, and those grinding are, those. Those motherfuckers are pungent. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, we ground it in the thing, and you open that up, and I'm like, wah, suddenly filled up the entire... Whew, hot damn. Yeah, I can smell them from here. Sheesh. Anyway. Uh, a quarter teaspoon? Oh, sorry, we're going to be cooking for a bit. Let's, oh, let's you're not, fine. Let's I, do... Uh, oh, Jesus, they smell so much. <laughs> A quarter teaspoon of ground caraway seeds. Black pepper, ground caraway seeds, and a pinch of salt. We stir that to combine. Next, we stir in our garlic. And once that becomes aromatic, we add in a cup of uh, the lager, which we're going to... We're upping the recipe slightly. Look, if we're putting beer in something, I want it to taste like there's beer in it. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to do a little bit of extra to see if you can actually taste it. Because, you know, you have like, this is a beer-battered fish. I have and I'm like, it tastes like bad. No, okay, that's, okay. It's beer-battered I, fries. I have a huge, oh man, oh, you're hitting on a huge button for me. I hate that. I cannot stand when something is beer-battered. And it's like an excuse to make it like 30% more expensive. Indeed. And it doesn't taste at all like the beer it just tastes like batter yeah. I've never gone to like Joe's Crab Shack and gotten beer battered fish and been like wow I, I love the I can taste the beer it's I'm... solving my alcohol problem it's not it never never have I noticed the flavor of something like that unless it's like an outrageously like I don't know where I was or whatever what restaurant I went I had beer battered fish but it was like with Guinness oh yeah that shit's gonna and then up. I was like oh okay I can kind of <laughs> taste the Guinness but even then really it was like a stretch to get it to taste like the freaking beer so no I am a Big. I'm a very big proponent of like, don't just throw this in for for. It's just for yeah. Don't throw it in for show. Throw it in for yeah. Yeah. Don't don't play for keeps, bitch. Yeah. Play for so it, it's just you're adding this ingredient and it's really going to be a throwaway ingredient because you can't even tell. Okay, and that's also oh oh we got into another one. Okay, you know what really grinds my gears? Hit me with it. Okay, we made jokes about it in the first episode uh, and macaroni grill and stuff like that. Too many of one thing, namely. And uh, this is the biggest defender of this, cheese. Okay. People will do six cheeses, four cheeses, five cheeses. You can't tell the difference. Cheese in and of itself is really good, but I would venture to say most cheeses don't have very strong flavors, right? Mozzarella isn't exactly they'll, like a... They'll smell more than they taste, Yes, usually. they'll smell more than they taste, right? Mozzarella is good, but it doesn't have an overtly powerful flavor, right? It mixes super well with... Sniff this. It smells really good. Hey, man, that's wanna, delicious. Like, we haven't really added any of the, like, really tasty stuff. We no, just you know what's... In. Okay, I would actually venture to say, like, I'd probably just put that on a hot dog or something. Or, like, I don't know, that looks like... That kind of slaw looks like it would be good. It's like we just made... It's like we just made delicious slaw. Yeah, which I'm okay with. All right, I'm excited about this recipe. So, I would venture to say that most cheeses don't have very, very pungent flavors. Cheddar is good but unless you get sharp cheddar it's like okay tastes like you know cheese i guess american white cheese american cheese and stuff like that they don't they don't really register at least to me they don't register high on the pungent like wow that's a flavor so when you get something like six cheeses it's just mush it's just mush because there's no they already all of the cheeses already have so little flavor values that when you mush them all together there's no way to, like, you don't have a discernible palate to break them apart and go, yeah, wow, I can definitely taste the mozzarella and the, uh, uh, the, Gouda. the whatever. Like, do, it doesn't. Do you hate people who say, Gouda? Gouda. <laughs> no, oh, I off. do. <laughs> I've met someone once who, okay, so if you're going to say things the legitimate way that you're going to say it, make sure that you are so good at saying it that it flows. Or be, conversation. be from the country. Or, or yeah, or be from there. Be That's from fine. there. Just be from there. Like, like. Spanish words. Sure. I can throw a Spanish word into an English sentence and make it work okay, but I 
want to die when someone would be like, so I was having this cheese and then I was going to, okay, I get it. You're so interesting because you know that word. <laughs> You're Charles Boyle from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yes, that's what it is. That's what it is. But not half as interesting as right. he is either. Right. Oh, holy hell, holy hell do I love that show. If you guys aren't watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, you're done messing your lives up. It's a Mike Schur Dumb show. fucked up. We talked about this before in, the, in a couple episodes ago about how Brooklyn Nine-Nine was a Mike Schur show, and he does Parks and Recreation, Good Place, and uh, oh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is funny. And they're getting renewed for their, so they had their, they went through their... Uh, um, their breakup. Yeah. They did, it was Fox canceled them, because... Because Fox sucks. Dude, Fox is... I, sh- I that's should do like that. We'll never get the ads. We'll never get the ads from Fox. It's okay. If we got on Fox, we'd get canceled. Yep. <laughs> so, we're fine. Anyway, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, they got their... Uh, they got canceled by Fox, and they got picked up by NBC, and I watched their advertisement on Facebook that's kind of making the rounds, and it's Jake Peralta. Um, Come smell this. I put the beer in. Come smell it. Oh, hey. Okay. Oh, lordy. All right. That seems like a good... Hey, do you want to open and split that one beer and drink that beer together? Uh, I probably shouldn't drink beer. Oh, That's yeah. I forgot. Ulcer. Tiny tiny goblin ulcer. Tiny goblin hates me having fun. That's fine. I- I've lost like... Since getting the ulcer, I'm down to like I've lost like twenty pounds. Hey, that's fantastic. Wait, lose weight. So it turns out not drinking <laughs> is, is not it's the like... worst thing I can do for myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's how much I hated my last job. Twenty pounds of alcohol. Wow. That's how much. That's a lot. Liquid calories, man. Woo. Anyway, I would uh, like to point out I poured in the beer and then my dog showed up. He was like, "Hey, what's that good smell <laughs> stuff?" What's that? What's that? What's he'll lick out a, a if I finish a beer, I'll like point the the bottle at him and he'll lick the. <laughs> The glass on the bottle. I don't know if there's anything there, and it's probably bad for my dog, but he has a good time. Yeah. Well, okay, I've heard that before, that you're not supposed to give dogs alcohol, that it can poison them or do things, but I can't tell you how many times I've had friends who've, like, openly given their dogs booze, and they get a little drunk, and the dogs are just fine. And they've taken them to the vets, and like, hey, is this fine? And the vet's like, no, nah, it's fine. It's sort of like, you so, shouldn't do it. Don't do it. Don't give your dog, don't get don't your dog do drunk. It. But then... But if your dog does find your booze... It'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be here. He or she will be okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm inclusive. Girls, Probably. Girl dogs can drink booze. So real quick, can I complain about the draconian uh, liquor laws that exist in the state of Utah where we live? So for those of you who don't know, Utah sucks. Okay, when it, their liquor laws are just absolutely terrible. There's so many limitations on anything interesting that you can get. So this recipe called for a German style lager beer. Okay, so I went to the I went to the liquor store. Went to go look around, see what I could find. They had lots and lots of stuff, but I wanted to make sure I stuck true to what they wanted, to what they were asking for. I didn't want to fuck around. And, and we want to stick to these recipes so that we make what they say or what, what they claim will be good so that we can call bullshit on them if, if need be. I went looking for the, and I, the closest thing I could get was a Belgian lager something something. I was like, you know, Belgium is... is Right there next to Germany. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But they also fought a lot of wars together, so I think their beer is probably a little bit different. Yeah. So I kept looking, kept looking, kept looking, and then I found Spaten Oktoberfest. And I was like, well, it doesn't say German lager. But, but it says Oktoberfest. It says Oktoberfest, and it says imported. It says imported. It says it's made in Munich, so yeah, okay. fuck it. I decided to go with it. Awesome. It smells great. All right, where are we at on the recipe? We have put it all together. What about, um, what about queso? No. <laughs> I dated, I'm never going to stop making that joke. I dated a girl who used to do that, and then I took her to Macaroni Grill. Oh, nice. And uh, then she uttered the phrase, I like Italian food, and then I didn't date her anymore. <laughs> Thanks, Rocky. Italian? What the fuck is that? It's Rocky Balboa. No. <laughs> no. Yes, it is. He is Italian. He doesn't go Italian. Yes, he does. He's the Italian stallion. Have you watched the movie? Oh, that's them just being silly. Uh, they're just being silly. They're just being goobs. Anyway, okay, you put the chicken stock in the... Okay, so I put all the stuff in that needs to go in. Stir in the garlic, uh, add in the cup of the lager, uh, stir to combine, a lot of the beer to reduce for about three minutes. Did add that. Add in the cubed potatoes, potatoes and the chicken in. stock. Chicken stock is in. And then once it comes to a boil, place a lid on, slightly askew to allow a little steam to escape, and reduce the heat to low to gently simmer the stew for about 40 minutes. 40 fucking minutes. After the 40 minutes, turn the heat off and finish the stew by stirring apple cider vinegar and chopped parsley. Add more salt if necessary. Yes. Which we could probably thicken it up with a little bit of... Um, you know what we could do? Hmm. We could take probably just a teeny bit of cream. Oh, that it does... Look uh, it doesn't look bad. And it smells pretty dang pretty diggity weird. dang good. All right, the caraway seeds are their own thing. 
with the lager was pretty good. The garlic salt is pretty good. Or did you put? Did, what do we do with garlic? Did we you just actually... put normal garlic? Normal garlic, normal salt. Nice. Okay, great. Which is good. And then uh... it said two cloves, which would have been like way too salty. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind. There's I like that. a lot of garlic. Nice simmer. and low. Steam. Uh, oh, cool. Your oven has a thing called simmer. I mean, it's... Simmer it's, done. It's, a, it's way too high for simmer, but, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it on simmer and see how it is and <laughs> change things as necessary. Okay, okay. What other... Okay, what other... Uh, I think that's leftovers? kind of it. We've got the... We've got the... We put away the most of the dishes. Uh, I looked it up. Oh, yeah. How many... There's... Uh, how many 19 chapters? seasons... 19. 19 seasons. Yeah, Friends thinks they're special. Get on One Piece's Good level. Good lord, people. Okay, and it's 19 seasons, but the thing is, is there's 83 episodes in a season. So there's 83 episodes in season 19. So there's, like... what is the, How does the math break that down? One Piece is a Japanese animated television series based on the successful manga of the same name and has over 800 episodes. Yeah. But I guess they're 800, so they're episodes. So I think the manga is chapters. So chapters are epi- yeah, manga's... Chapters are things, and then I think, I don't think they directly correlate over. They're probably, like, whole books of the manga are episodes. I would hope so. Because if there's 980, I don't want to watch wow. 980 episodes. Anyways, I'll get around to it. That's bonkers. That's much One day, too much. I'll have a surgery. I yep. won't have anything to do for hours yep. at a time. You're going to break your penis. <laughs> Uh, break my dick off. <laughs> got to glue it back on. It's gonna take two weeks in the right, hospital. You'll have the giant cast that totally covers your whatever. Uh, that covers your middle. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, your lower extremity, your so, middle extremities. So I got a question. I never really got into Tumblr, and I know you are are much more of a Tumblr user. Sure, sure. So Tumblr. Okay. So so the reason why we're bringing this up. Y- correct me if I'm wrong. Yahoo bought Tumblr. Yes. And then Yahoo was and then like... tweeted, we're not going to screw it up. And they tweeted that. And then the next thing they say is... No more we're getting adult rid of the content. Porn. Getting rid of the no, porn. No, 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 no. They're getting rid of all adult content. Female presenting nipples. Oh, how, how, way to like take all the sexiness <laughs> away from a nip. Like they just drained it. Like female presenting nipples give me no boners. No none, boners. None whatsoever. You could throw me on some roids and I would still be like, yeah, my boner's nope, not into that. Not. Um, no. They're, no, no, they're getting rid of anything even remotely related to adult content in any way. So, you remember Scrubs? I do. Do you remember the episode where uh, Dr. It's, Cox talks about... Um, either this guy's colon is a good idea or he's got a light bulb shoved up his ass. <laughs> Which is the best joke, <laughs> the greatest joke, because it's a damn X-ray on the wall with a little <laughs> ding, ding, in his booty. <laughs> in don't his... stick things up your butt. No. I had a friend who was an EMT, just so all of you know. He was an EMT, and when you stick something up your butt and it gets stuck, don't tell the EMTs, I fell, and it just got stuck up there. We don't. They hear it every time. Uh-huh. They don't believe you. Nope. They know you put it up there for fun. Yep. Just be cool. Just say, like, I was getting weird, getting weird. and now it's stuck. <laughs> and they'll weird. be like, hey, no worries, man. Haven't had a girlfriend right. in a couple of years. Had a butthole for a long time, so I had to do something with it. Trying out new things. No, no nothing wrong with trying new things. But uh, <laughs> Dr. Cox does does a little bit. Saw where some he, stuff on Tumblr that I wanted to recreate. Right, right. He, he talks about how if they got rid of all the porn on the internet, he would just make one website. It's called bring back the porn okay because it's the only one that matters and so this got me thinking tumblr's getting rid of rid of porn we should and and from what i could tell tumblr just had like poor content and and occasional classy pornographic things that's what i saw from the outside oh okay so my very limited understanding because it doesn't seem like there's a ton of explanation or it's not homogenous content it's all over the place well okay so what i'm talking about is is i it's i haven't done really any reading as to why they're getting rid of it but i don't care my understanding they shouldn't no my understanding they're getting rid of it is because there was a very large child porn community online there was a very large so that's bad it was a bad it was a big old hub for the cp for the cheese pizza which is remember that (laughs) remember Because kids love cheese pizza. That's <laughs> no, bad. No, no, that was from uh, uh, John Podesta leaks from the DCCC campaign last year when, or uh, when when Bernie was Sanders was being elected, and it was all the stuff around Hillary Clinton's campaign. Right. You never dove down that giant rabbit hole. Oh, of I did. I did. Theory. You get deep enough, and you go, oh, it's complete bullshit. Yep. No. So okay. So I understand 
I understand them. It was yeah. So they, they trying to make the world a better they place. They cranked they cranked down on on the, the on the the cheese I think it's pizza. Cracked down, but you masturbate by cranking. Ah, uh, cranking. I don't know. <laughs> Crank anchors. Terrible show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome and funny, but terrible. Awesome show. and funny. I just remember the one that the guy was like, "Eat the used handkerchief," and I was like, uh, 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 "Stop! Uh, I have to change the episode. I can't watch I'm this dying. anymore. I'm dying." Anyways, I, I bring that up. I bring that up because they are. Getting rid of the porn, and I don't think they realize that when you get rid of the porn, you might as well just kill the website. Yep. And that got me thinking about this wonderful thing that I saw where someone talked about how pornography is one of the easily identifiable causes for human progression. The first one that this <laughs> thing pointed out to me was back around the Renaissance. Yeah. Okay. There was this little lithograph, pamphlet, leaflet that had pictures of of naked people doing it. Okay? Oh, nice. But it also had writing underneath it. Sure, sure. So we need to wheel back a little bit and realize that before the end, before World War II, mm-hmm. it was totally normal for like most people to not know how to read. Like it's a bizarre thing in our time. Oh, sure that most for, people know how to read. And it's the inverse where it's like, oh, you don't know how to read. You're the anomaly. And it's like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, and that's fine. If you don't know how to read, it's okay. You keep doing your thing. How should you find this podcast while you're listening? But <laughs> hey, get, keep on keeping on. Sure. Um, We're also not drunk history, so don't expect this to be 100% correct. Right. We don't <laughs> care that much. But um, anyways. I'm not so, going to cite my sources. So there was this little uh, pamphlet that, like, of course, everyone wanted to get into because it had the nudes in it. Nice. Okay. But they wanted to know what was going on. Transcribe nudes. Right. <laughs> Transcribe. Uh, Carve nudes. Uh, what is, uh, what did, uh, printing press some nudes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this Move existed. Print type those nudes. It's, it was, people wanted to read it. Yeah, sure. And so that's when the working class started to figure out how to read. And then what happened in the Renaissance? The rise of the merchant class. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the nobles didn't have a lockdown on being able to read and being able to function in society. And now a bunch of poor, perverted people figured out how to... uh, The Renaissance is post-middle... No. Post-medieval. Post-medieval times, right? So uh, that's Gutenberg, right? Johann Gutenberg is right right at the end of the... Oh, my God. Did Johann Gutenberg print... Nudes? I mean, more or less. He probably he, did. He gave us the ability to mass produce some he nudes. He totally did. He did that. We got Playboy. That's just the connection mm-hmm. now. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so and so they so pointed out to- <laughs> they pointed out some other things that that you know uh, pornography did. And so uh, one of the other big ones is what was some of the first internet transactions? People paying for porn. Oh sure. Because of that. We got PayPal. We got all sorts of ways. That, that's that's what paved the way to e-commerce. Sure. It was boobies. 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 Okay. And, and Nick and, Beards being like, I want to see them. Right, right. Okay, another good one. Which is also probably why we have high-speed internet. Yes. yes. <laughs> 100% why we got, like, yes, we use it for other things, but who was willing to pony up the money, the, the sort of starter money for it. It was some weird guy who just needed to get his porn, and sure. he had several billion dollars and yeah. just went for and it. And was like, listen, I don't want to wait three hours for this one picture to right. download. I have stuff to do. I got stuff I got to do. Important business or whatever. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Think about phones, okay? Cell phones, okay? Oh, yeah, screens have gotten bigger. When did we figure out, or, or when did screens start to get bigger? Mm-hmm. Around 2007, 2008, when internet, when over-the-air internet speeds mm-hmm. could finally handle video porn. Yeah. Suddenly, video, we went from yeah. flip phones to yeah, pictures, to the iPhone. just pictures, to then and then bigger, 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 because we figured out we could watch porn on it. iPads. <laughs> so the point I'm making is, is you can get rid of the porn. Did you say you, the point you're making or the porn you're making? Because I thought <laughs> the porn, the porn. I don't know. That's what I heard. That's great. That's what it needs to be. Is if you take the porn away, you've ruined the thing. You've ruined the thing. Yeah. R.I.P. There's nothing, yeah, R.I.P. I, I'm sad about it because it's really nothing's going to happen with it. But I, like this, the part about it that I think is the biggest issue is is that you have all these safe spaces and communities for um, individual artists or individual people to sell their not safe for work art. It, it, <laughs> I don't know what to, you know, you've got all these people that are creating their own content and literally they're, they're making their lives work by, I, I mean, yeah, I mean there's been a, some really neat artistic stuff on Tumblr. Sure. As well as some neat as Well, as some just regular, like, 
Oh, that girl's hot. Oh, she's selling pictures of herself. Great. I will buy those. <laughs> you know, I, it, it's made a way for a lot of like entrepreneurs to break out of the, I, I would, I would say that the, probably the traditional porn industry in like Hollywood or other places is actually incredibly toxic. Is actually incredibly destructive to a lot of people. And I've read a fair amount of articles on medium and places that talk about how destructive and, uh, almost cannibalistic the porn industry is because of how it just, I mean, it can chew through anyone. Yeah. It, people come in and they get forced to do, not forced, but they just get like, oh, hey, you want to make money? Do this thing. Oh, hey, you want to make money? Do this thing. Hey, you want to make money? And yeah. then suddenly people who are. It's, it's an always an ump the ante. It's, oh, yes. It's, it's, how you dangerous can okay. you make it? How you violent weird. can you make it? How many it? things can you put in your butt? Yep. It's, yeah. Like, it, it, <laughs> so it gets bad. It gets really, it gets to a place where it's actually very terrible. And a so lot understandable. Of Someone's sort of like, uh, I think I could make money taking pictures of my boobs, but I don't want to go to Flagstaff, Arizona to find some weird. Guy yes. who does a whole lot of crack uh, to yeah, do to, to, to maybe get paid a thing in a very unstable and unsafe environment. And so you had this entire platform for people who could safely make their way in the world by like, hey, listen, people want this content. I'm creating this content. Yes, it may or may not have moral implications, but that's for the weebs to decide. <laughs> the weebs. <laughs> I, don't. I don't know. I don't care. I don't have. I don't have hangups with stuff like that. I, you sell your sell whatever you're going to sell. It's fine. I don't give a shit about the the moral aspects via christianity or anything nope no. atheism is my god and um i it just doesn't it doesn't bother me but it, i think yahoo going like no nope, no more everyone's done you can't do anything anymore you're not just killing the porn <laughs> you're uh you're stepping on a ton of people's livelihoods and or secondary incomes. Who and, are, and a lot of people's interests just yeah, coming to the site. Of just coming to the site of like, oh, hey, I'm into this one weird specific thing. And I have a, I now have a, a home and a community of people who feel the like-minded way that I do. And I don't feel as weird because I've got this one specific thing that I like. You know, the whole, uh, oh, I don't know. Just whatever the BDSM community in general and how they, right. they've found that space online. And it's, it's very disappointing to watch Yahoo go. Yep. Right. Yahoo, who has consistently failed, unsurprisingly, which continues they, to shit the bed. Why are they? What are they doing? They're who? desperate. What? Are they, in business terms, they're completely and utterly desperate. They're grasping at straws. So they had a, a little bit of money, and they thought, "What could we buy? Well, we can't buy Reddit. We can't buy YouTube. They we can't buy this." Freaking bot stock in Google. Right? I don't know. <laughs> There's like, so many different ways they could have done anything but this. Like they could have just yeah. They could have just crawled into a hole and died. Sure. Because they could have liquidated whatever assets they had and walked out actually, profitable. They should put all their eggs in the Yahoo Answers basket because that's what people are going to Yahoo for. Yeah. Really. Not not really for any answers. Just Yahoo Answers is. It's utter garbage. No, I love it's it. Fantastic. Well, that, that my Bim Bam podcast, those my brother, my brother, me. They they make their living off of making Yahoo Answers a thing, and we've right. laughed many a time at their goofiness. Yeah, it's just play to your strengths. <laughs> and this was a poor move on their this part. This was they. It was very disappointing and very sad. They, they dug a hole and they said, "Well, I hope I don't fall into that." And then they fell in it, and they were like, "We're not going to screw this up." <laughs> Sort of like, but you're in the, oh, all right, you're okay. in the hole. fuck you. Sure, fine. Just drag us all down while you're at it. That's great. Anyway. I'm going to reblog pictures of my VHS tapes. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything I've learned about humans, we like drugs. Uh-huh. And by drugs, I mean chemicals that affect us in such a way that we experience something outside of our norm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not Tylenol. Yeah, no, that's more of a... Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> that's a medicine. I would call yeah, it a yeah, medicine. Yeah. Medicine. No, you're good, you're good. Humans like drugs. Mm-hmm. Okay, we invented beer in Egypt, and we're just like, cool, we're sticking with this. Or this I don't know if it's Egypt. I think it was Mesopotamia, whatever. Close Dishes. enough. But we're just like, this stuff is great. This stuff is great. We're going to do it forever, forever. now. Forever. Okay. Um, also, we like naked people. We like seeing other oh, yeah. pe- other members of our species naked. Yep. And no matter what. We're Pretty sure cavemen were like, yeah. They're like, oh, I'm into this. This is I'm great. Gonna... You see what's-his-face? Kill this. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> um, so it's just. Humans are always going to find drugs. Uh-huh. You you can try and stop it. No, I'm pretty sure drugs. we were finding like weird berries. Right. Back in the time right. we were hunters and gatherers, like, dude, eat this. I mean, in winter we had nothing to do, so of course we'd eat weird berries that yeah. make us, you know, nearly die. What's this smell like? I don't know. Try it. Okay. Right. Oh, he died. Oh, don't shit. eat that anymore. <laughs> shit. Ugh <Ooh>, died. <laughs> um. <laughs> and then we like seeing each other naked. Uh-huh. And no matter what you do, we're gonna find a way to see each other naked. Yep. So we can. We can do the thing where we try to make that more difficult or go, hey, this or is utilize kind of a, it. This is kind of a thing that we've always done. 
uh, let's just stop stigmatizing it. Right. Just, I mean, in some ways, monetize it. Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> make it better. Don't be weird. Make monetize it better. It. Make, yeah. it, make, it, make it more accessible. Make it a thing. And I, I, I get their respect for, like, canceling the child porn hub. That's, yeah. We don't, nobody needs that. Child porn's bad. It's very bad. Stay away from that stuff, but. Jared Fogel. Uh, uh, Subway. <laughs> you know what I saw the other day? I saw a video. Uh, I think it was on last week tonight. Mm-hmm. I'll have to look it up. But Oh, John uh, Oliver? Yeah. Oh, uh, but it was great. just a series of some of the more prolific people who have uh, been rightfully taken down. I'm hoping rightfully. Most of them so far rightfully. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you can harass somebody at the con. Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'm looking at you. Oh, man. That depresses me. But it does. Just, but just hey, man, done. you don't touch people's butts without their permission. Right? If you want to touch a butt, ask. And if they say yes, go ahead. If or they don't say no, weirdly, touch your own. You got a butt. <laughs> you got your own butt. Imagine your own butt. Don't weirdly, also don't weirdly force them no, into like watching you could you it. Louis C.K. You could stranger it. Sit on your hand, or in some way cut off the circulation, <laughs> grab your ass. It's like the same. Oh, wait, hold on. No, wait. It's the, hold on. That's someone who likes to have their ass grabbed. Never mind. Don't do that. The, yeah. Don't play stranger. Whatever. No, I was going to say something and I can't remember what it was. Oh, okay. So, and it was just a series of videos or is a, just a clip montage of people who have been either convicted or, or sufficiently accused of sexual harassment in the situations talking about the things that they were absolutely guilty of. My favorite was Jared Vogel at an elementary school. Oh no. Um, some of them were like Charlie Rose talking about sexual harassment and not being able to say the word sexual harassment. He got tied up on sexual harassment for a solid nine seconds. And it was just like, oh, should we really have been that surprised? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those when you see it, you're just like, oh, the signs were there. The signs weren't were there. they? Mm, the signs. Speaking of signs. And that wonderful Mel Gibson film in science fiction. Let's transition over to my other point that I was about to make. Okay. Oh, I don't remember what it was. All right. That was a bad transition. Wait. Oh, no. Um, I had a great thought last week about... um, I forget what we were talking about, but it was just... uh, Oh, it was. I think it was just sliders. We were just joking about oh, the hell. Right. Yeah, slider. We were talking about sliders, and this is how we got into penicillin. We were talking yeah. about what's his face, uh, Gimli went back in time or whatever and gave us penicillin and stuff like that. And my favorite. That's one of my most favorite sci-fi tropes. Sci-fi fucking tropes. That's my okay. one of my most favorite sci-fi tropes. Okay, so there's this film, and this was pointed out to me, but not by a science fiction film, but by another film. So there's an uh, Aaron Eckhart. Uh, He's the actor. That's an actor. Yes, that's the actor. So Aaron Eckhart is the actor. He did a film called Thank You for Not Smoking. No, no. No, it was Thank You for Smoking. Oh, uh, Thank You for Smoking. It was, yeah, Thank You for Smoking. You're good. It was you're a good. great film. Love it. And in the film, he's very much the guy who – he argues very well. He's a lobbyist for tobacco companies, and so he's very good at his job, not because he makes cohesive arguments or anything, but because he's able to manipulate people incredibly easy because he himself is very charming and smiley and things. He's a handsome he, bastard. He's a handsome son of a bee. <laughs> so he goes to Hollywood, and he meets – What's his face from Parks and Recreation? He meets Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe is yeah, in that he movie. He meets Rob Lowe in that movie. He I saw Lowe. that. I saw that movie in like 2008. Yeah, so it's been 10 years. It's been a, no, it's been a very long time since I've seen it too. But so anyway, Rob Lowe is the Hollywood executive, and uh, Aaron Eckhart is super impressed by Rob Lowe because he, while Aaron thinks he's really good at his job, Rob is like a million times better at it at being this ultimate straight up bullshit artist. Anyway. In promoting this new, so their Aaron Eckhart's tobacco company wants to start advertising to children. <laughs> they want to start advertising to kids, and they don't know how to do it. Because so they come up with a roundabout way, and they go to he goes to Hollywood, and Rob Lowe is like, "Oh, this chic." In Saudi Arabia is going to put up this money for this science fiction film. We'll get some famous stars, blah blah blah. And my favorite thing he says about all of it is. Um, Aaron Eckhart says something about like, uh, or so Rob Lowe says something about like, oh, the climax, the final scene, they're floating in naked in zero gravity and they light up a cigarette. And then Aaron Eckhart's like, wouldn't that cause a fire in an oxygen rich environment? And then Rob Lowe goes, yes, absolutely. But we'll just use a single piece of dialogue to fix it. Thank God for the uh, blankety blank machine. The phlebotanum. That's what they call it. Phlebotanum (laughs) is the concept of. The thing that doesn't exist that we pretty sure we can't even justify very quickly, but it's the thing that solves the problem. That solves the problem. It's the hyperdrive. It's the chronotons. It's <laughs> the what else is that? It's the it's the um, what's the thing subspace from subspace? Is that subspace is the phlebotanum in Star Trek? Yes. <laughs> uh, 
because it's not a real thing, I guess. Um, <laughs> and so it's just like, oh, how do you guys move fast? Subspace. How do you do this thing? Subspace. How do you do, you know, how do you hit superluminal speeds? Subspace. Subspace. So it's my favorite. That's my that's my absolute favorite trope in sci-fi is that when someone says, oh, it's the blankety blank thing that is now the answer to the thing. How do we how do we round about physics? One sentence. Mm -hmm. Oh, and shit. It, and it just it works every time. And I, I die laughing because it's so evident in so many different um, in so many different science fiction tropes. It's the Lilu Dallas Multipass, multipass from uh, the Fifth Element. Yeah. She's the her whole character is the right. MacGuffin of that yeah. never her show, where she's just the she's the Fifth Element. She can, she can the, speak what? all the things. She, she can speak can, all the things. She can do all the things. She, she can, can fight heal all the things. All the things. Yeah, she, she can chicken all the things. <laughs> she ate a lot of food. I was impressed. She, <laughs> which is hilarious for Mila Jovovich. I'm like, you're still so thin after the filming of that of that movie. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> anyway, what was your what's your favorite sci-fi trope? Um, I really, really okay. So I like the look behind the curtain, or the getting a peek behind the curtains, that whole idea, where a show, uh, or a sci-fi show, mm -hmm. has to admit, we're not real, we're just a show trying our best, and they have the, uh, on a planet, just like Earth, they have to go and visit, and and they they dress like people of uh, either a current or a former era. Star Trek always had the, uh, they're always dressed like mobsters. Oh, sure. On, on a season, it's just like, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no way that in the infinite expanse of the universe with innumerable possibilities, there's no way there's another world that has Italian gangsters. Okay. <laughs> but Italian, gangsters. Italian, fuck. <laughs> so there's an episode, there's always an episode per season, maybe a couple episodes where mm. they have to go down to a planet. I'm not just Star Trek, all sorts of sci-fi. They have sure. to go down to a planet that is so very similar to Earth mm -hmm. and they dress like, you know, people in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Orville also had this. What oh, it yeah. is is it's budget. <laughs> should we build a whole set and make this look like an alien world or should we just use a downtown street in LA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta, we're going to film in Chicago. It's fine. Just, let's just do a thing. Um, Black Mirror did that. Yeah? I think they've done a couple episodes like that, I think. I mean, most of Black Mirror is, like, taking place near future. Is it... I wonder if it's Black Mirror where they had the episode where it was, uh, like, the up and down, the upvote, down. No, that thing. was Orville. That was Orville. It was Orville? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, that's that's what I was thinking of then. It was yeah. Orville. I liked that episode where they, like, went down to the planet. It had See, the upvote and the downvote. And they did a good job. It was a budget saver episode. Uh-huh, for sure. Which kind of also ended up being one of their better episodes yeah, that season. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Good on them. That was very good. All right. Okay. Soup's that means, on? That means, allegedly, it's done. Okay. All right. You had a potato, and you said it was cooked through. Yeah. I'm surprised. It also has for a fucking tablespoon of parsley. Okay. <laughs> half, the, half the thing of parsley? Not, that's most of my parsley. That's most of the parsley. <laughs> so I'm going to shake in a generous helping sure, Yeah, be it. a generous, but it's probably going to be like an eighth of a table, because there's just not... Yeah, I'll make it so you can still see it from space. Sure. Because <laughs> I feel like a tablespoon of parsley is like, we want it to just taste like parsley now. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I didn't even know where the recipe... We didn't even say where the recipe comes from. This recipe comes from thecozyapron.com. It was uh, published September 21st in 2017 by an Ingrid Beer. Oh, you don't say. I... D how, many, how many tablespoons of, of uh, apple cider? Uh, one, I think. One? Just one. One and a half. Oh, one and a half. That's... One and a half. And potatoes. That's it. Put it in. Add more salt if necessary. And then one. serve in large bowls with some hearty rye bread or rustic rolls with butter or cream cheese. Don't have any of that. That's, <laughs> we're ready to eat, though. Yeah? Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. I don't know. It looks... Yeah. Okay. I see why you're very hesitant with this recipe. Because it doesn't look like the potatoes are cooked even a little bit. Yeah. They're very solid. They're very solid potatoes. And as you're stirring it, they don't seem to moosh. Yeah. Um, the, the picture that it has of it has them like... You know when oh you, soft and crumbly and falling yeah, apart and stuff like, like that. They look buttered like, potatoes. Yeah, 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 almost. yeah, yeah. Almost. They look like they're on their way to being mashed. And these no, these still look like the little cubelets that you cut up and everything. But uh, it's supposed to be done. So hey, we're gonna trust the recipe, and if it tastes like ass, we'll just throw it out. <laughs> Suck it, Ingrid Beer. <laughs> Which just makes me think that some kind of pseudonym nonsense. Right. Somebody didn't want to make up a thing. And I'm sorry, your name is not Ingrid Beer. No one's name is Ingrid Beer. 
Could there be a more German name? <laughs> Christoph Christopherson. Right. <laughs> Heinrich Munich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Johann Hamburger. Yo- <laughs> All right, so I got a bowl. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a stew where it's mostly. What's the delineation between soup and stew? Thickness. Thickness, right? Where the soup has less. Soup is more liquid. The stew is more chunk. Right. This is the. This is the Goonies of of soups. Oh, it's fucking hot. Whatever it is. Yeah, it really is. All right. Turns out when you uh, leave it on hot and simmer for a very long time, this is what you get. It's going to steam so for a super long time. So how do we test this? Do we just want to get a, a spoonful of everything? I yeah, I kind of think that's how that's going to have to work. So get a get a get a little bit of everything. Get a sausage. Get a potato. Get a get a cabbage. I'm going to wait for it to cool off. You won't. You'll just, nope. I'm going to you'll just uh, plow scar in. Scar your esophagus. <laughs> You got a, mmm, what, a, okay. Mm. Tell me what you're getting. Okay, well, the bratwurst sausage, that's really good. Okay. I'm curious about the cabbage. are fine. I don't Is taste. Is it filler? Yeah, it's filler. I don't taste it, per se. Um, it's, that. I guess the cabbage what is I, what makes it good for you. Sure, I guess. I really like the liquid. Just burn the shit out of my tongue. <laughs> now everything tastes like leather. But the little bit I can taste is, it's a completely foreign flavor, but I like it. I think you picked a pretty good beer. I think you're pretty, Can you taste beer? beer? I can't taste any beer. No, at no, all, I whatever. taste this. That's one of the things that I actually do taste. Is I taste a teeny little bit of that um, very prevalent flavor of hops. Now, it's not that there's tons of hops here in the in the stew. I just know how hops taste, and I'm like, oh, there's a little hint of it. I burned the ever loving shit out of my tongue. I'm very sorry. That's yeah, okay. I did that this week. So my wife has a Yeti, uh, like. Oh, one of those... Um, Gla- like thermoses? Yeah, yeah, They're all over the place. Everybody wants one. Okay, I want so one. I made some green tea with it because I got kind of a cold this week. And I made it at 7.10 in the, in morning? the morning. At 11.20, I went to take a sip of it, burned the shit out of my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Yeti. Yeah, I was like, I couldn't be mad. I that couldn't was, be mad. You are like, damn, yeah, I was like, get this hot. Shit. shit. That's awesome. Well, I'm sorry that you're burning out because I'm like, I'm, this is fun. like it's, it? it's basically cold now to me. Oh, you know, want to talk about my? I was like, you want to talk about my superpower? It's eating hot food. Yeah, apparently your tongue is made it's out of completely like completely fine. Yeah, it is leather, so it doesn't bother with like, oh, this isn't that hot. You're like, oh no, this is scarring. We are scarred. Because the fun part is, is when it gets it's in the, on the rare occasion when I actually do burn my mouth, it hurts for a minute, and then I'm like, okay, and now I'm immune to it, and I'll continue to eat because it's like, ah, <laughs> we've already reached the pain threshold. You know what? It's you, turned off. You just push on through. Yep. It's, it's impressive. I just run that 50K. This is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not miraculous. No, but... It's a good stew. It's a good stew. Were I at a German restaurant and I had this, I would order it. Yeah. That'd be cool with it. Yeah, I'd be fine with this. Like, if I got a dish and this came, like, would you like a cup as a, you know, as a beer <laughs> stew? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. Whatever, man. The beer stew. Yeah. Would you like a cup as the Oktoberfest stew? Yeah. I'd probably be like, sure, I'll try it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. Okay, so so the rating system. So uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up. So thumbs up to adding this to a cookbook. This you is would. definitely a good. This you is would. definitely like a good. It's kind of it's a celebrate. Like I wouldn't put it in the weekly rotation. No, no, it's kind of a hassle. But this is definitely one of those like, oh yeah, absolutely. I would have this for friends. I would have this for family. I would yeah. have this for any kind of celebration or a holiday party or something like that. Should we want to get drunk around Oktoberfest and people want to come over to my house? I would totally make this. Oh yes, if I wanted to have any kind of Oktoberfest celebration, I would have a lot of beers and I would be like, oh hey, look, we got Wiener Schnitzel and we got. I would make, happily, happily make this. It's good stuff. I think there is a fair amount to be improved upon. I don't know what to improve upon, per se, or I don't know what would improve it, but I feel like, and this is where my negative five, does, like a positive five comes into play. This is like a two. Yeah. It's, like yeah. A two. it's, a, it's a good stew, but really, it's salty potatoes. I don't taste the apple cider vinegar, which that, I don't know why we added that in. When you put it into something like this, and it's super duper hot. It makes it sweet. Not even... No. But that what that tells me is is this was very tart. Oh. It must have been very, very, very tart. To add in a thing of apple cider vinegar? Yeah, just put in that apple, to, for the apple cider vinegar to kind of calm it down and do the thing. I'm going to see if I like a bite without beef stew, or without the beef smoked sausage Oh, in beef smoked sausage. Got it. Because... Sometimes I feel like uh, again meats also, will do all the heavy lifting. Yes, that's the, okay. That's also that's what I feel like. This is the recipes is without the sausage. This is just cabbage and 
Oh, that was uh, your guts. That was, <laughs> that was my dog. <laughs> you heard a little... <laughs> it was great. No, that was my stomach. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like the beef is doing all the heavy lifting in this in this instance, and without it, it wouldn't be. Without it, it wouldn't be. Good. I went to blow on the mic instead of my food. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Da- cool down. Cool down. Cool down. I'm the worst. Um, I like the liquid. The broth. Yeah, the broth is great by Let's itself. Try the broth. Let's just try the broth. Just by itself, the broth is pretty good. Without the beef, yeah, it wasn't as good, but it was still good. Like if I if I were given this and I only had like. Three little pieces of beef, I wouldn't be too sad. I would be sad. I'd probably punch someone. Yeah, I'd be like, there's not enough meat in the soup. This is disappointing. This is a rip. This is pretty neat. I'm going to finish this bowl for sure. But it's Uh, like a two, I think. It's not miraculous. But I don't taste beer. I don't. I don't know. And I'm wondering if I, do I taste the beer or do I smell the after, yeah, do I, am I, is my brain tricking me into thinking that the beer is there because I I know it's there. But yeah, if you didn't put beer into it, would I, I I don't know. I change. I tried just the broth. Just the broth by itself, and you get a tiny little bit of hops, right? There's something in there. There's just something in there that's not that's not the caraway seed. That's not just salt and pepper and onion and things. There's a little, there's a weird third ingredient, which makes you think, oh, yeah. yeah I'm still not sure why the cabbage is. I think the cabbage the is beer. there to make it good. I think the cabbage is there to just make it heartier. It's it's filler. Gives you a little more matter. Yes. I think that's, that's Would really Would you it. put cheese in this? I wouldn't put cheese in this. Uh, sure. I'd put something like Roquefort. Or a what? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'd put like Roquefort. A, yeah, I'd put like a or maybe like Stilton or something like that. I would not put any kind of like no Parmesan, no mozzarella, no sharp cheddar, no nothing, nothing, nothing Americanized at all. Uh huh. Okay. No French cheeses or something like that. Maybe, maybe brie to make it really creamy and really sweet. Oh, that's right. We were gonna put cream in this. We were good. Uh, we could, you know what? We, I'm glad it's good without it. I'm glad it's good without it. I'm it glad we be, forgot. It'd probably be fine, actually. And you know what we could probably do? We could probably drain the soup. And have the broth and turn that into like a thing, and that might Ooh. be just the broth and you cream that. That might be really we could, delicious. Put some, some cream, and we could put some some flour in that, thicken it up, make it like a good make a good gravy. Make this good would gravy. make a killer gravy. Motherfucker, that's good. Mm-hmm. I'm really liking this. I don't like food like this. That's one reason why I wanted to try this. This is the kind of food that I see, and I'm like, no, my plebeian palate wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> What's that, me lord? Nothing. Back to your turnips. Back to your turnips. <laughs> What do they say on Monty Python? There's some, there's some, uh, there's some great shit over here. What is it? <laughs> I don't know. I there's was some putting... delightful filth over oh, here, sure. something like that. In, in a Holy Grail, right? Yeah, yeah. Got it. It's some delightful filth. filth That's over what it here. is. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, I didn't vote for you. You don't vote for kings. Yep. Mm. How do you know he's a king? He hasn't got shit on him. He hasn't got shit on him. <laughs> I heard that was an improvised line. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done, boys. Terry Gilliam. I think it would be fun to experiment with different types of beers. I think if you got like a Chimay or something like that. Uh, I don't know about al- enough about alcohol to know fine. what that was. I think uh, if you got, I don't know, something imported or something like that, you could really have a lot of fun with altering the flavor. Because it seems like the root core ingredient of the liquid part about it is... Um, is the beer, right? It seems like there's two two main ingredients to two halves of the soup. So you have all the um, solid ingredients. You have the cabbage, the sausage, uh, and the potatoes, right? Potatoes, you can't change the flavor. You could use sweet right. potatoes or yams or something. And that that'd would be, be weird. That'd be super weird. So no. That'd be weird. Um, and cabbage, you can't substitute what? You substitute red cabbage? It, it wouldn't. Whatever. I don't think that would make too much of a difference. No, you wouldn't even notice. So the other point is... It'd just be redder. The physical ingredients, right? The the ingredients that take up physical space, the, you know, I don't know, heavy, the hard ingredients and stuff like that, you could change the sausage, right? Sure. If you use kielbasa or if you use a Polish sausage or if you used beef or something, I don't know, sub tri-tip, I, whatever you do, you could change that flavor capacity in and of itself. And then for the liquid ingredients, really it's beer, so right. I think if you got it's like, beer, chicken stock, and that's really yeah. All. You, you know what beef stock versus chicken stock would make this a teeny bit heartier, I guess. Right, but it wouldn't change the it wouldn't change the flavor profile by a ton. You go from like oh, it tastes a little bit lighter to oh, it's a little bit heavier. Mm-hmm. Right, the biggest thing would be the change of beer. So if we did like three different kinds, three different three different kind of darknesses of yeah, beers. sure. If you got like a really blonde, an amber pale ale or something, or an India pale ale of some sorts, that would have its own really unique flavor. If you got uh, you know, a Hefeweizen versus a lager versus a, a oh, porter. Fancy, yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, 
I don't know. If, no, de- I'm with you, yeah. Depending on those types of, like... You make one with an Imperial Stout, my favorite beer. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, if you got something super thick and super creamy, and then you had a really, like, you know, I don't know. Doing something like that, you could really change the whole um, flavor profile of the soup. And, which I think makes this... The reason why I would add it to my recipe book is this, this lens towards a lot of creativity. This yeah. lens towards you being like, oh, I don't have... Oh, crap, what do we have in the fridge for beer? Oh, so and so brought this weird thing from wherever. You're like, oh shit, let's try it. You know, I wouldn't do any fruity beers. No, no, yeah, I would never do anything like that. I wouldn't do any kind of bitch beers or anything because that would be <laughs> sugary and weird. I'm not gonna put Smirnoff ice in here. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be horrible. Smirnoff strawberry. Smirnoff strawberry. I wouldn't do a you know a, a strawberry or something like that. Whatever. Oh God. I wouldn't do any kind of like Coors or Michelob. Right. Or right. Uh, Miller Lite or anything, or Pabst or stuff like that. I wouldn't do any of those because it wouldn't taste like anything. I would stick to European stuff or even maybe like microbrewed things. Maybe, maybe. Maybe if they say Sam German Adams st- or something. Yeah, or yeah, why not? Why not? You know what I would put in here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uinta, Uinta Brewing makes this beautiful stuff I get every winter called Yard Sale. It's my favorite beer. <laughs> I was just thinking. Uh... It's a winter lager, and the logo is a guy skiing, but he's like. Skis are up like is that the one that in the tastes middle? like? Uh, it's a little Christmassy. It's very delicious. No, there's one that they make that is like it tastes like uh, pine needles. A little bit. I've had that and I hated it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my it's my favorite because so, it tastes a little Christmassy like that. Maybe it, was, it does taste like pine I'm needles. A, I'm a fan of like super dark beers. Someone was like, oh, "This is a super dark beer." Oh, I drank sure. it and I was like, "This tastes like pine needles, like a tree." Like a fucking tree. <laughs> I was like, no, it's supposed to taste like angry, dark cocoa beans. Cocoa beans. And coffee beans and gravel. Um, and Okay, there's a really, if you've not Mushrooms. Had a, okay, I'm going to get <laughs> mushrooms. Um, are you a fan of like coffee beers and stuff like that too? Have you had any of those and you like those? I'm going to get weird with this. Okay. The beers that say they are a coffee beer, uh-huh. no. The beers that make whatever claims they, they are about their flavor. Notes. And they say... We've also brewed this with coffee, and they don't make a big deal about it. I like those. They don't necessarily have a tremendous coffee flavor, and that's not what attracts me to it. But I find the ones that are just like, that's the coffee beer! And you drink it, and you're just like, I'm just... They just put some alcohol in coffee. Oh, what is this? Okay. okay, there's a... I was like, there's a really good one. So Epic Brewing has their Big Bad Baptist. Have you had that one yet? Uh, I saw it. It was one of the ones that I was considering for I, this. But... Oh, no, no. It would... That would... Not be right for this recipe, but I will next time I will bring a bottle. Next time I will bring a bottle, we will crack it open. We'll have a little bit of it. I know you can't drink a ton because you're ulcer and stuff, right? Like that, but, but I'll have a little bit. Oh man, oh man, I am drooling thinking about that. It is ultra delicious. I drooled earlier while making this. <laughs> Did you drool into my soup? No, I drooled onto the floor. Oh, okay, <laughs> you drooled into my soup. Oh, there it is. Gross. I'm giving it a two. What do you got? <clears throat> I give this a three. I kind of like it. Yeah. Okay, it says to have it in the direction. It says to have it with, like, a hearty bread. Oh, and sure. I love me a rye bread. Yeah. So, uh, if I were to do this again, if I was feeling fancy, I would make it. Mm-hmm. And it says to leave it for a day. And I'm not sure if it keep it warm for a whole day or just let it sit room temperature for a day. I okay, think that's usually I how never, you get... Yeah, that's how you get E. coli. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't, make it, stick it that's in the fridge. That's how you get staff. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's getting their skin flakes in yeah, there. No, they, me... get, they get MRSA or whatever it is. Yeah, um, uh... <laughs> right. No, I bet you, I bet it's like put the whole pan, let it cool to room temp, then throw it in the fridge. Just keep the whole thing in the just fridge. Keep it together, let it sit. Yeah, let totally. It sit. Totally. I'd do that and then make a delicious rye bread and then I would kind of dunk the bread mm-hmm. in. Dunk. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Um, oh, do you remember you... Dunkaroos? Oh, I love Dunkaroos. <laughs> Motherfucking it's, Dunkaroos. It's so funny that you bring that up because I remember wanting to talk about Dunkaroos like two episodes yeah. ago. I just, for some reason, I thought about it. I think it was, I think we were talking about something about being kids in childhood and I just remember childhood snacks and I was like, oh yeah, I never had Dunkaroos. I always had to like barter friends stuff for Dunkaroos. Well, Dunkaroos were like dessert Oh yeah, um, Lunchables. Mm-hmm, dessert Lunchables for sure. And then Tobias Schnall uh, punched me in the face because I took one without a mask. I took Fucking one. Fucking Tobias. <laughs> His name's Tobias. He hit me. He with lost. His, Don't he, worry, he lost. He hit me with his plastic pencil keeper thingy. Oh. Was full of stuff. Broke my nose. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey, Tobias, if you're listening, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, cool. Thanks, buddy. Uh, 
You, yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> that was worth... Oh, Dunkaroos, huh? That was an appropriate reaction to a Dunkaroo. I'm John. I'm Bryce. This is Ben. The, the one, one Pan Podcast. Oh, we almost said it at the same time. Uh, that would have been adorable. <laughs> that would have been adorable. That would have been really sweet. Thanks for listening, y'all. Tell your friends about us. We'd love to make money doing this so we could do this. Yeah. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Google Podcast, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are found. You can find us on Twitter at One Pan Podcast and Instagram at One Pan Podcast. Tell us horrible things. <laughs> Keep us entertained. Tweet us the nonsense. If you make the recipe, we'd absolutely love to see the photos and your reviews. Thumbs up or thumbs down or five, uh, plus five to negative five and do the jam. Food's funny. Uh, it's not so much. <laughs>